Welcome to Designs for Zen Luna Yoga at TROCCON Online. I am so happy to be here and to be presenting yoga really early on day two of our TROCCON Online. This is my first TROCCON, which is funny because I was almost tempted to go in person, but things have been crazy. And one way that we can help to deal with all of the wild craziness in the world is to practice self-care. And yoga is one way to do that. To get started, all you're gonna need is a blanket or a mat. So this is an actual yoga mat, but even if you have like a nice blanket or a beach towel or something soft to sit on, you can do that. If you don't have anything, you can do chair yoga, just modifying your poses to go along with it. And also, because this is like quarantine, paper towel rolls are really good to use as blocks. So you can put them down. If you need help getting down and up, you can actually use the paper towel rolls on either setting sideways or up and down, or even like cans, things like that. So you've got some home props for yoga. <laughs> and we're gonna today go through a really slow, relaxing type of yoga. And because this is Luna Yoga, we're going to be focusing on the moon and lunar yoga is more slow and recycling, which is actually funny because it's the new moon. So things are going into another period of reset where you can start to set your new goals. So things have been pretty bad, but let's turn it around and have some fun at TROCON. Because this is gonna be interactive, if you do have questions or poses that you wanna talk about, I'm here. <laughs> I am, again, Rifting Designs, just newly minted certified yoga instructor. And so that means that I have taken 200 hours of training on yoga poses, breathing, and not only the poses, but the mindset of yoga. So bringing in peace, mindfulness, learning about the, the need to give back. And we always need to give back. And this is how I give back by offering yoga. Hello, Kermit. <laughs> I will do a little more explaining in this offering than I do in general offerings. So if you want to take a more yoga class style, please go to my YouTube and there are quite a few videos now. I do this every two weeks. This one for Luni Yoga, we're just gonna get started. Yoga classes generally start by sitting still and just coming to your breath. So find a comfy seat. And notice your breathing. Again, this is meant to slow and still. Rift Wing Designs practices Bob Ross yoga. That's a term I made up, but if you know Bob Ross the painter, rest in peace. His style is to do whatever calls to you. There's no mistakes, only happy accidents. There's nothing that you can do wrong except not doing anything. And I caveat that by saying, don't do anything that causes pain. So you can start to notice your breath, which is one of the main parts of yoga. Maybe sit up a little straighter, Maybe put your hand in your belly and feel if you're breathing from your chest or your belly. Typically when you're stressed or if you have any medical issues, you may be breathing more in the upper regions, but belly breathing is what we have. There's tons of resources online that can teach you how to expand your diaphragm on the inhale and exhale and really use your body to take those deep breaths. These are more calming because it comes from your core. When you're breathing from the, your chest and your throat, that can also initiate some of the panic responses. So if any of you have done anything and learned about the ways to help calm yourself with anxiety, it all comes back to breathing, finding a cyclical moment. So for us, let's do a count of four. I'm gonna count twice and then you can go on your own pace. This is your practice. So Bob Ross style says, if you don't like what I'm doing, you do what works for you. If you like a fast yoga, do your thing, I'm still here. If you wanna just sit here and breathe for the rest of the next hour, that's still yoga and it's totally awesome. So everybody, we're on an inhale, deeply inhale for four, three, two, one. Exhale, 
four, three, two, one. Inhale, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. On your own. Make it as long or short as you need. Maybe you flutter your eyes closed. Listen to your body. As you're breathing. Is there anywhere that's tight or tired? Is there anywhere that's sore? Being here right now, on your mat or blanket or bed or chair, that is a gift you have just given yourself. So thank yourself for being here. You can go back to a normal breath if you like, or you can continue breathing. To start our yoga practice, I'm going to talk about one quote from Bloom and Gloom that Princess Luna says. Sometimes we can worry about a thing so much, the fear can make us feel like we're trapped in a nightmare. Sometimes it does feel like this life is a nightmare. Let's let go of that worry for the next 40 minutes. So focus on where you are now. In the traditional opening of yoga, we're going to inhale and raise our arms above our heads, keeping the shoulder blades down. Feel the stretch. Maybe use your hands and try to like pull your arms up like you're reaching for that sun. Probably as Luna, she's like, go away and try to block out the light. <laughs> and then keep your hands up, lower the shoulder blades down and feel the opening in your back. So when you're doing that, your shoulder blades are actively able to lower. And again, if this is painful for you, don't do it. But try to feel how the shoulder blades can tuck back and in. Ooh, big stretch already. <laughs> From here, we've got our arms up. Exhale, drawing your hands together. This is called a mudra or hand position. It does look like prayer pose. And if you want it to be prayer pose, it can be. But it's just a symbol of connection. And in yoga, we use this to connect to ourselves. At the beginning of a yoga practice, some like to do om, I do not. <laughs> I like to just continue with the intention. And the intention is you are making a promise to yourself. What is it that you want to focus on during this practice and maybe beyond? So at the end of the practice, we'll also come back to the mudra and the intention and you can change it or you can continue it. So take a moment here as you're breathing to think about what intention you want to set. And if nothing is coming to you, I will offer to you the intention of peace. It can be world peace or it can be internal calm. On an inhale, breathe in, make a big exhale. We're going to do one more big inhale. Sealing our intention with a big exhale. All right, you're officially in yoga. So now we're going to start by doing some stretches. You can do these seated in your chair or on a mat. Again, do what's comfy for you. Sometimes it's more comfortable to sit on a, a mat with your hips. So you've actually got a little gap here and then you allow your hips to stay higher up. That can work if your pelvis is shaped differently because we are all different and we're all beautiful and we all have our own needs. So again, yoga, listen to yourself. To start off with, we're gonna do some seated cat cow. So when you do that, you're going to put your hands somewhere on your legs and you're just gonna hunch over, but you're gonna be moving from your shoulders. So as you're going into your cat, you're tucking your chin and really stretching your shoulders forward. And then for your cow, you're pulling the shoulder blades back, maybe looking up wherever your neck wants to go. And the most important part of yoga is you're exhaling as you're going into your cat, like a black cat hunching its back, inhaling into cow. 
and really articulate. I like to do slow yoga where you feel every bit of your spine, your shoulder blades, you feel your body. You're not doing it so fast to get that cardio. If you like cardio, I may not be the instructor for you. Maybe each cycle you focus on one thing, whether it be the shoulders, the breathing, the neck. Go at your own pace, doing your cat-cow here. Remembering to breathe. And then come to stillness. Maybe take a couple more breaths and feel how your body feels now that we've started to calm down and stretch. Anytime you need that big exhale, go for it. Take a deep inhale and let it go. On the next inhale, hands up. Exhale, fan them down. Again, if your shoulder blades allow. Inhale up. This time we're going to take both arms to one side and doing a little twist. You can go as deep or as shallow as you want. But focus here on keeping the spine straight and just twisting during the exhale. So inhale to lengthen, exhale to twist. Again, this is not competitive yoga. If all you can do is just move your arms over, that's fine. Or if you can be a pretzel, be a pretzel. I don't mind. The best part about doing it this way is that I can't see you, so you do you, all right? Inhale, arms up. Exhale, other side. Breathing. On the inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Find what speaks to your body, and that will be exactly what you need to do today. I can't tell you that. <laughs> for the 200 hours of yoga practice I have, I cannot tell you what is good for you. Inhale up. Exhale, hands down. We're going to do some shoulder rolls. I like to do four corners, so that's forward, up, back, and down. And you can even tie in your breathing, inhaling as you're going up, exhaling as you're going down. Again, if this works for you, if you like to roll your shoulders differently, you go right ahead. And yoga is about balance, so we have to go the other direction. So it's back, up, forward, and down. Back, up, forward, and down. And I'll tell you, this feels good to me, so you do you. Another thing is, in yoga, if there's a pose that you really want to stay in, again, stay in it. Do what you need. As we're going into our neck rolls here, gently, don't go all the way around, but just start to roll your head from side to side. If there's a sticking point where your neck is like, oh, I'm tight, maybe stay there. And what I like to do is just rotate your nose, and that actually gives your neck muscles a bit of a massage. Oh, yeah, I am tight right there and maybe you're perfectly loose that's great too after you've got your neck a little bit loose maybe you do a full roll only if it's safe and no pain and then come back to center raise your head lower your head to one shoulder and so I like to take my hand and gently place it on top of my head taking the other arm out reaching just to get a good stretch along the neck do not press with this upper hand just gently rest it. And again, maybe you rotate your nose around and see if there's some place that your neck is really stuck. Breathe here. I love this stretch. This is a good one to do at your desk. Or if you're playing a game and you get to a loading screen, just breathe. Stretch it out. Inhale. Raise your head up. Exhale. Other side. Oof. <laughs> this side's even tighter. Again, placing your hand on your head, just gently, maybe finding a place for your arm that makes the stretch feel better. And if this doesn't work for you, you can always just go back to your breathing. <sighs> maybe again, moving your nose, Whew, seeing if there's any other sticky points for early morning or late night yoga. Man, Oof. there's going to be a few. Inhale, back up, and take any other movements in your neck and shoulders you need here. Maybe you get a drink, 
And maybe if you want, you can post in chat and see if you thought of any other sore points that you want to stretch out. So we are going to go into our actual yoga practice now. And we've got, perfect, another 40 minutes or so. Including the nap at the end. <laughs> so I'll give you guys a second to do that. There's going to be times when I demonstrate yoga poses. You don't have to turn all the time, like just stay facing one direction. But I like to turn so that you guys can see me when I'm doing different things. So we're going to get started. If you need a cushion like I'm doing here for your knees, go right ahead. And again, if you need blocks, I'll demonstrate with my paper towels because I think these are fantastic. So we're going to go into some kneeling cat cows to start. You can put your hands here and do it like this. Uh, this is also a really good way to help you to stand up if you have any mobility or joint issues. And again, you can put them on the lower sides too. So all I'm doing is I'm just flipping them over. Paper towels, man, the yoga key. So here we go. <laughs> you can do this or you can do um, the full. So one thing about doing this with um, your, if you have any wrist issues too, if you're grabbing this and using it as a block, that helps to keep the wrists from getting too sore. Actually, maybe we'll do some wrist stretches. This is this is flexible yoga here. So let's do some wrist stretches. Now that you guys are all warmed up, hands out. Okay, do some little wrist circles. <laughs> totally going the wrong way. And then the other direction. Or if you want to have some crazy fun, try and do them opposite directions. Here are the cracks. Do the Macarena. Whatever kind of crazy dance you want to do. Then you can take your fingers, interlace them, and kind of do like a crazy. Oof. This is another good one to do when you're taking a break on the computer or gaming, or especially if you have a corporate job and you're stuck in an office. Okay, so now I'm just extending. Oof. <laughs> just extending. <laughs> uh, okay, hands back out, fists rolled up. Turn them over, and this time you're going to rev like you're riding a motorcycle. So we're going here. There we go. Ooh, this can be really tight. And if it's uncomfortable, again, don't do it, but it's really, really good for the wrists. <sighs> like, this is a workout, guys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Woo, shake it out. Good job. <laughs> now that we've got our wrists warmed up, let's go down onto our mat. So one way to do it is palms. Planting in front of you, shoulder width apart. And shoulder width and hip width is about two knuckles. So take those two knuckles, put them between your knees, put them on the ground, plant your hands, plant your knees. When you have your hands down, you want to have pressure in your fingertips and, and the heels of your hands and in the little pad of your hand. But you do not want to put any weight in the middle. Fingertips and then the pads here and in the back. That keeps your hands healthy and it should keep your wrists healthy too. If this doesn't work for your wrists, you can also keep your fists and just go down on your fists. Or you can use some paper towels. <laughs> so over here, just do circles, feeling how your wrists are stretching. One way and the other way. And as you're here, maybe you start focusing now on your hips instead of your wrists doing any movements that work for you. I like to do big circles and walk my hands out a little bit and really just oof, wake up. Do what works for you. Do not think you have to go and do these crazy cat stretches that I'm doing. Find your stretch or maybe try what I'm doing. And then come back to your tabletop. This time, if it works for you, Rotate your hands so your fingertips are facing backwards and just feel the stretch here. Your gaze should be down and slightly in front of your hands, neck neutral. Now, if this isn't too much, you can try and do the circles over your wrists again here, slowly and gently. This is another great, great way to stretch those wrists, but it can be too much. You never wanna to go too far back so like, don't go any further back than this. You don't want to be going like this and hyperextending your wrist, but good stretch. And then maybe you flip your hands over. Ooh, 
this is a good one. So I just flip my hands over and now I'm on the back of my hands, fingers facing towards me. My goodness. <laughs> this is yoga, guys. It's all it is. Just stretching and breathing. All right. I think I got to shake my wrists out again. What do you guys think? Okay. Now that we're here, let's do some bird dogs. <laughs> it's a great name, right? So you're raising one leg back and stepping. So your foot is flexed. Nice 90 degree angle here. If this is enough, you can stay here. If you want more challenge, you can raise the opposite hand up, keeping your spine straight weight in both the, the other leg and the hand that are down. You're going to start to breathe heavier. <laughs> okay, you can bounce your arm and your leg up if you want exercise like that. Then come to stillness. Draw your elbow and your knee in if it works for you. Have them touch. Come back out. In yoga classes, they often do like four or five, six of these. Do as many as you feel. Uh, if you fall, that's fine too. Come back up. Just fall safely. If you can only do your knee without your hand, go for it. This is your practice. Maybe you find something here. Wherever you are, come back to all fours. If you need to give those wrists a break again, go for it. If you want to do a round of cat-cow here, go for it. From here, coming back to stillness. Inhale, raise the other leg up, stretching back, flexing the foot, pointing the toe down. All right, you guys. Now maybe working on the balance, lifting the opposite arm up, straight forward, gazes down, spine is straight. Focus on pressing with those fingertips. Maybe you do a little bounce. And maybe on an exhale, you draw your knee and elbow in. Do a few of those if you want, or not. Good. And then back down. Ah, breathing here. Next, we're going to do one of my favorite stretches with my legs. So take that first leg back up again. I like to then draw it across the other leg. So you're actually stepping outside of your second foot and looking back at your foot if you can. It's a bit of a twist. Maybe your neck doesn't want to look. Do what works for you. And I'm actually going to rotate here so you can see this next part better. So I've got my leg twisted behind me. You trace a circle with your toes as you bring your leg back over and then open up. Here I like to sit back a little bit, but find a stretch that works for you. Again, use your paper towels or your blocks. So you've got this nice leg stretch here. Mm. You should feel this underneath your leg, maybe in the ankle. Again, your foot does not have to be pressing down, but if you press the outside blade of your foot, you're gonna get a deeper stretch. <sighs> Let's do a gate pose while we're here. So if you can, raise yourself up. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, you're tick-tocking over that outstretched leg. Arm up, other arm is on your leg. It's really just laying there. You should not be putting your weight on your leg. You can look up or down. Remembering to put weight on the outside of your foot here. Your back foot, you're just pressing with the top of your back foot. On an inhale, use your abs to lift up. Whew, all right, but we're not done yet. Tick-tocking the other way. Again, maybe you need a block here. I'll show you what it looks like. So you're going down, and now you're doing the opposite gait. Still pressing on the outside extended foot. Arm is up, looking up or down and keeping your weight nice and balanced. If you'd like additional challenge, try to raise that foot. <laughs> and because this is Luna Yoga, why not try a bind? If it works for you, you take the raised hand and raised foot, try to grab your ankle from the outside of your foot. So I'm lifting up just so you can see what it looks like. 
but keep it kind of parallel to the mat. Feel the stretch here. Do what works for you. This is pretzel pose number one. <laughs> and if you're in your bind, slowly release, come back. If you stopped anywhere along the path, take another deep breath. Inhale and get yourself back up. While we're here on our knees, I'm just turning again to show you. Let's do a camel, so just get centered. Hands are gonna go on your back, lower back. Elbows back, ooh, that opened your shoulders. Maybe we just stay here for a second, trying to draw your elbows together. Ooh. Gaze should be focused ahead. Spine straight, pressing down with the backs of your heels as well as your knees here. And then if you'd like, you could do a little back bend, first bending back, and then maybe looking up at the end. If this is painful, don't do it. And I'll show you the next step in camel, but this can be dangerous, so definitely only do it if you are comfortable. <sighs> Getting out of this is the hardest part. Using your core. Straighten up here and then fold back down into your table. And let's go into a child's pose. So child's pose, widen your legs and lower onto your feet and stretch your arms out in front of you, walking your fingertips. You can go down as low as you want. You can use your block and rest your chest or your head on it. Or you can go all the way down walk your fingertips out a little more really feel the stretch and then press your hips back and down now take your fingertips and walk them to the right keeping your body centered but just getting a side stretch here and breathe stay here for a moment Oh, this is good, right? Let's just stay here, guys. <laughs> then walk your fingertips back to the center before walking them to the other side of your mat. And breathe. Push those hips back and down. Breathing here. Maybe from here you can feel the breath in the back. So there's lungs near your spine. Try and feel those lungs expand. And then back to center. Mm. From here, walk your hands up, or if you want to stay in that child's pose, stay in that child's pose, guys. <laughs> Let's take another break before we do the other side. If you have any questions, please post them in chat. If not, we'll have a little bit of time at the end, too. So we're going to do the other side. We're going to do one moon salutation, then we're going to slow it. We're already halfway there, guys. Good job. Coming back to our tabletop. Inhaling, lifting the opposite leg up. So for me, this is my left leg. Crossing it over behind you. And again, I'm just turning to show you. And then looking over your shoulder towards that foot. There it is. <laughs> again, only going as far as you want here. Then coming back, you're gonna trace with your toes a big circle as you sweep it across to the other side. And I'm just gonna move this over here. So now you've got your extended foot. From here, first we stretch, maybe moving our body back and forth. Again, you can keep the blade, the outside blade of your foot up or down here, but down gives you a deeper stretch. I like to go all the way with this one. Ooh. Breathe, always breathe. And then walk yourself back up. From here, find your way into a raised position, pressing on the back of your foot and your knee. Outside foot is now extended with the blade down. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, we're folding over the extended leg. Your arm is reaching onto the leg, the other one reaching straight up. You can look up or down here. Remember, don't put your weight in the extended arm. Breathe. Maybe reach those upper fingers just a little more to really get that side stretch in. Oh, yeah. 
Use your core to pull yourself back up. Hold here for breath. Exhale, go the other way again. Get that block if you need it. I like gate pose for Luna because she is a gatekeeper into the world of the dreams. Or maybe they're sheep jumping the gate in the fence. One more breath. Inhale up. All right, so last time we did camel here. This time, as you draw into having your knees down, I'm actually just going to move my mat here. So you're like this. This time you can either sit back on your feet or if you want a little toe burner, take your toes, tuck them under, and then sit on your heels. It could be very painful if you don't stretch your toes often. And if it is too painful, please stop. But usually a little bit of pain here. It's just a stretch. Focus on your breathing here. Count. Maybe roll those shoulders back a little bit. Straighten your chest. Focus on anything except for those toes. And if your toes are not stretched, just focus on your posture and your breath. Or maybe you're just sitting. <laughs> you do you, Bob Ross style. Find what makes your happy place. Come on, guys. Three more breaths. Good. One more. Inhale. This time, let it all go. Put, plant your hands, and actually, we're going to beat our toes on the mat here. Stretch them out. Oof, give them a wiggle. Good job. Then, oop, we're going to tuck our toes one more time and actually come into a forward fold. Again, using those blocks if you need to. So here, forward fold. You want to keep your knees a little bent. Never lock your knees in yoga. Grab your arms and your elbows and just swing here. Rock your head and do like yes and no. You want your neck to completely release in forward fold, and that's very difficult to do. It took me probably three to six months to really get my neck loose. This is practice, and you have to be good at keeping at it. Remember to keep those knees. Maybe you actually give yourself a more generous bend here. Rock side to side. Feel the stretch. Even if you want to come down to your knees, really just feel it out. And then maybe straighten a little bit, but keep a micro bend in your knees. Plant your hands in front of you. I'm just going to turn this way. Inhale, half lift. So your hands are on your shins. You want your back to be flat like you can be a table. <laughs> Thankfully, I can see myself here, so... Keeping your shoulder blades back and down. Then plant your hands. Exhale. Inhale. Come all the way up. And then we're going to go into mountain pose. This is one of the best yoga poses. Because you're literally just standing there. So mountain. You can be like this with your hands again in that mudra. Or extended out. Shoulders are back. Knees lifted. You're like a little pain squished between two walls with a trash compactor in Star Wars. That's all you're doing here. So I'm going to go through a moon salutation slowly, and then we're going to do one at a faster pace, and I'm doing air quotes here. <laughs> so this is going to be standing, stretching, and movement. Again, if any of these are not comfortable or if you want to stay in your chair, just do the upper body movements to make it work for you. On an inhale, hands up. Bind your fingertips together. You can either just hold them like this, twist it, or they like to do the little pointer finger in yoga. So that's above your head. On an exhale, bending to the right. So you're doing like a little banana here. Inhale up. I'm actually going to do it facing you. This is a little bit better. Exhale. So you're going to draw your elbows and shoulders back like a goalpost arms. And I'm actually going to, I've got my cheat sheet. Yoga, you're allowed to have cheat sheets. So you've got your arms and goalposts. You're going to go into a squat. This is called goddess. Goddess of the night. Empowering. Also burning. <laughs> then inhale up to five-pointed star. Another great yoga pose. Maybe shrug your shoulders up and let them down. Five-pointed star is meant to have power in your shoulders. 
your knees should still have a little bend in them here. Then similar to gate pose, which we did before, we're gonna inhale and then go into triangle. It's kind of like a modified triangle. So you're just going to the side and making some shapes. Again, just bending. It does not have to be deep. You really wanna feel your breath in the side stretch. Maybe you're looking down here. And then we're gonna actually rotate over that extended knee. So I'm going to the right here and doing a, a deeper stretch if it works for you. Or you can bend your knee, maybe you need that. From here, planting your hands and going into plank. So your hands are pressing. You can keep your knees down if you need to. Actually, there is no plank. I'm totally joking. <laughs> You can tell I'm rusty. So step back that right foot. We're actually going to stay on this lunge. It's just the lunge. And then you're going to walk your hands around. Again, balance or blocks. So now we're in this like power squat. And you're just stretching your legs here. Guess what you do next? You go to the center into yogi squat. So your hands can be in the middle. Or they can be down. Your bum can be up or down, or maybe you're sitting on a block, but we're not going to be here for long. And then we go to the other side. So everything is about balance. And now we just do the other things in the other direction. So we've got our lunge, turning opposite direction for the low lunge here. And then you maybe step a little bit forward, and we're going to go into that forward fold with your legs out in the triangle. Inhaling your arm up. And then pull yourself up into five-pointed star. Then we're going to lower into your goddess. Breathing here. Reach up, hands together. Now we're stretching to the left. And hey, we did it. Back to mountain. We're going to do one more. <laughs> And again, everyone is not the same. So if you need to do something different, go right ahead. Inhale up. Stretch into the right. Inhale up. Step out, goddess. Raise up, five-pointed star. Hinging to the right. Then rotate over the right foot. Lower and bend the knee into your low lunge. Walk through. Stopping in the middle at a yoga squat. It's a lot faster when you don't have to talk about it. <laughs> then you're going to do stretch your leg out and do the other side. Again, arms where you need them. Rotate on other legs. So now you're on your left knee forward. Low lunge. Lifting back that low other foot, the back foot, into your triangle here. And then raise your hand up. Lifting with your chest to your modified left side. Stretch. Use your core. Pull yourself up like we did in gait. Coming into five-pointed star. Almost there. Lower into goddess. Inhale up. Grabbing your hands. Side stretch to the left. And back up. Exhale. Lower your hands down. Maybe bring your feet together. Forward fold. That's it. That's as far as we're going to go, guys. It's time to cool down. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Let's do one more fun little movement here. This is for my yoga final. So inhale all the way up. Exhale. You're going to go back into your yoga squat here. From here, we're going to do a twist. So actually, like, twisting your body one way using your hands. And then twisting the other way. And then from here, if you have crow in your practice, <laughs> go into your crow. I'll show you what a crow is. But this one takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. So crow from a squat. Your elbows are in the crook of, uh, well, your knees are in the crook of your underarms. And there's a lot of videos that show you the full description of it, but you have to really use those wrists and fingers and all that weight planted in your hands. And then you lift off. And this took me literally years to get to. And that's as long as I can hold it. <laughs> Again, there's no wrong way. You see people flying crows doing twists and upside downs. and You do you. 
And if you want to get their practice, but do not think that you are anything less because you can't do a crow. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I am sweating. So I know it's supposed to be a gentle yoga, but you're still really getting your body involved. So let's cool down. <sighs> Straighten your legs in front of you. Inhale up and forward fold. For here, you really want to keep your spine straight. You can go only as far as you need. And then you can bend your spine if you want to go a little deeper. Inhale up. Take your left leg in. And we're just going to do a side stretch here. So you can either stretch over the leg, or I actually like to do a middle stretch. So I inhale and then fold over in the middle. You might want to use a block here to rest your head on. I'm sure this looks great. <laughs> Breathing. Thanking your body for working so hard. We did a lot of legs and wrists today. Surprise. Switch to the other side. So your right foot is in. Inhaling up. Exhaling to fold. Finding that fold that works for you. Coming back up. Now draw your feet together here. So you're making like a little triangle with your hips. And again, if you need a cushion under your ankles or your hips here, please sit on that blanket or towel. I like to hold my toes here and straighten, straighten up with your spine. And then forward fold. So here, the further out your feet are, the deeper your hips are gonna be able to move. It's literally just anatomy. Find what diamond shape you want to do with your feet. And then we're going to do two mermaids. It's kind of Luna-ish, I guess. So take one foot and rotate the hips. You're leaning to one side, and now your feet are like in a little pinwheel-looking thing. So I've got my left knee out. My right knee is like in the crook of my toe here. And here I'm just going to do some circles with my hips. So your feet are just kind of moving those hip bones around because we haven't really done as much with the hips here. And go both directions. And then I like to plant my hands on the forward facing knee. So for me, this is the left. Sitting up straight and then kind of folding over and doing some little, we call it just a mermaid dive. So imagine you're sitting on the rock going, woo. <laughs> Oh, if you missed a little bit of it, don't worry, we are recording it. And it actually does going to have a replay. So thanks for showing up. Jo you can join in now because this is the slow stuff. So actually, it's going to be just a quick stretch for you. But thank you for showing up. Okay, other side. So if you want to do the funny way, instead of just flipping around, you can actually walk your hands, plant your feet, lift up, and then you fall over somehow magically your knees with the other way. This does not usually work for me, but it's a fun thing to play with. <laughs> Yoga should be about having fun. So now right knee is out. Pinwheeled so your left knee is in the crook of your right foot. And just circle those hips the other way. Doing what you need here. Maybe you need that back twist. Maybe you just need to stretch those hips. Maybe a couple of dolphin dives here or mermaid dives, whatever you'd like to call them. I'm sure there's a Luna name. Somebody clever in chat can come up with a Luna name here. And then come back to center. Your feet are coming out in front of you. We're going to go onto the floor for this next section. So if you want to do a little bit of ab work here, we're going to go through boat, which means your hands are out. You lift up your feet and you're actually balancing on like your hip or your sits bones. If this is enough, go for it. Hold this here. Pulling in with your core, breathing. Another modification, extending those feet. You're really going to feel the burn. And if this isn't enough for you, you can extend your arms. You can go into a low boat, hovering here, pulling in with your abs, breathing. You can lift back up into your high boat. This is hard. But I like to do it as like ab crunches. So there you go. Morning workout for me. You guys can just fall onto your backs. Whew. And I will meet you there. 
That was it, I promise. <laughs> Pull your knees into your chest. Give yourself a big hug here. Oh, we are officially done with the hard work. I like to rock back and forth to give your back a massage. Maybe your hands are on your knees and you do circles. This will help to massage your lower hips that we just stretched out. Your knees can be together or apart. From here, I like to keep the right knee in, extend the left, maybe flex that foot as you lower slowly down. Noticing how different this feels than when we were doing those bird dogs at the beginning. And once your leg is on the ground, you can relax. This time we're gonna flex the, so we've got the right knee in, the right foot, flex that foot, and then do some ankle rolls. We were standing and doing some fun stuff with our ankles, so give that a little massage. Pull it in. And if it's available to you, take your left hand on your right knee, twist. For here, you want to keep your shoulder blade down. Only twist as far as your body wants to go, Bob Ross style. Your knee does not have to even cross your body. It doesn't have to touch the ground. You're just getting a twist in here. Breathe here. Maybe that opposite arm, your right arm is stretched out or goalpost behind you, find a comfy place. And then your gaze can also go to the right as your knee twists to the left. Breathe, relax. For Luna, this is bedtime. All those moon salutations to raise the moon. On an inhale, draw that knee up, give it a hug and then let it go. Draw in the other knee, so this for me is left. Flex that left foot, maybe give your ankle a roll. And then with your right hand on your left knee, stretch it across the body, twisting here. Keep your shoulder blades down, go as far as you need to. And maybe you have a gentle gaze on the left. I could stay in these poses a very long time. This is part of my morning and my bedtime routine. I love to stretch my spine out like this. Inhale, draw your knee up. Give it one big hug. And then draw both knees in. Plant them down. So your knees are bent, your feet are towards your bum here. We're gonna do a set of bridge. So bridge, can be a lot of different things. The most important thing, and I'm just gonna show you with my hands up here, is we're gonna focus on the hips. So your hips are actually tilted. And when you, so plant your feet and just barely lift your hips and feel how the movement of your spine changes as you lift the hips and then lower them. So you're just, just barely lifting your hips. Feel that movement. And the next time you raise up, maybe go a little further. So we're building this bridge. This is the bridge into the next world, maybe the daytime or the nighttime. Exhaling as you're lowering. Inhale, rise up and go as high as your bridge wants to. So your hands can be below, um, palms down, pressing up as you're lowering. I'm pressing up as you're lowering. You get what I'm saying. Pressing down with your hands as you're raising up. If you're up and you want to hold it here, you can. And some people like to clasp their hands underneath to really help to open. That doesn't work for me. What I like to focus on here is your thighs should be reaching in. You should be pressing your thighs together. If you want bonus pain here. I mean, not pain, right? No pain allowed. <laughs> bonus exercise. You take that block and you put it between your thighs. And you do it like this. That way you have to press in and it really does help with your form. So now I'm doing paper towel <laughs> bridges. All right, wherever you are, come back down. And just notice how your spine feels here. The neutral spine after you've really worked those hips. We've got just a couple more minutes left. So if you have any other movements that you'd like to take right now before we go into our final relaxation, you can do that. Some like to do an inversion where you raise your feet up. Ooh, just get a little burn and stretch here. 
Some like to do happy baby, which is where you grab your feet and you widen your legs and you just kind of roll around like a happy baby. If you need any other stretches or twists. I like to take my feet together and do a diamond laying down. Oh, this is the best. And I take a diamond in my hands too. I'll give you another few breaths here to do your stretches. And if you're coming into your final rest and you need a blanket to cover your core, you will be cooling down here. Or if you want to lay someplace more comfy, find that place. Everyone begin to find your way into Savasana. This is the resting pose. Traditionally, your feet are extended out. Take any last movements with your legs. Maybe adjust your cheeks here. Make sure that you're nice and settled in. Hands out. Shoulder blades down and back. Maybe rock your head back and forth here. Hands can be with the palms facing up to gain energy, or the palms can be down for grounding. If you are with Luna and you're going to bed, maybe you try your palms down this time. If you are like me and you're waking up, maybe you keep your palms up here. Staying here, closing your eyes and beginning to relax. As you go into Savasana, this relaxation, you'll actually be doing some kind of meditation, which is literally noticing your thoughts as they float by. So imagine there was a river that went under the bridge that you built. And thoughts that you see are floating on the river like leaves, or maybe a little bug that's running across the surface, or a duck any creature that you find and you notice it and the thoughts continue, but they're on the river and the river continues to flow. So as your thoughts continue, acknowledge that you've seen them and you hear them, but then let them go. Take a breath, continue breathing and allow the thoughts to go by. Right now is your time to relax. I'm going to walk you through a guided relaxation. So begin to release any last tension in your forehead and between your eyes. Release your jaw and your tongue, your throat and your chest. Good on your right arm. Maybe on an inhale, you feel energy drawing in and it's going down your arm and elbow to your right wrist and fingertips. And then it draws back up through your wrist, elbow, shoulder, across the other side, relaxing your left shoulder, elbow, wrist, and then back up, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, to your chest, drawing it down your belly, feeling the warmth, down to your hips that you've worked so hard, and now down your right leg, first at the hip bone, right knee, right ankle and your toes releasing any tension that's left speaking of we're drawing back up the right leg past the knee and the hips across to that left leg the last place to relax as you go down to your left knee ankle and toes and then draw it back up through the knee and hips. And now take all that energy back up through your hips, belly, chest, throat, head, forehead, and crown of your head. And feel the energy both coming in through your breathing and then release any tension shining that positivity through the crown of your head. 
I'll give you one moment here to relax. Take one deep breath in as we begin to come back into the world. Maybe roll on your wrists and toes. Maybe shake your head back and forth, just stretching anything else that you have. Thanking your body for this. Take a big body stretch, reaching up above, stretching your legs, and then roll to one side. This is the in-between. Savasana's corpse pose is the end. For the princesses, it's the end of Luna's time, and she allows Celestia to come in. But to get there, she has to go, and Celestia has to be reborn or just, you know, come in with her coffee. So from here, I'll just say that Luna often has to fight her own nightmares, such as the Tanibis, which was feeding off of Luna's guilt. But Luna learned to move on from the past and to really become positive. As we mentioned at the beginning today, sometimes it feels like we're trapped in a nightmare. I hope that this yoga practice helped you to realize peace and calm and to find things that'll help you to continue on and become stronger. So find yourself back in a comfy seat, roll up, maybe keep your eyes closed or invite a gentle gaze. Once you're seated, roll those shoulders back and down. Take a deep breath in, let it go. I thank you all for being here. And then inhale, raise your hands up. Draw your hands back to center. Again, finding what works for you. Come back to your intention for just a moment. Did you find peace? We're gonna seal our practice with two breaths. Inhale in and exhale. One more in and let it go. Raise your thumb knuckles to your forehead. The traditional thanks in yoga, the light and love in me honors and thanks the light and love and friendship in all of you. Thank you so much for practicing with me. In the words of the yogis, namaste. And thank you all for being here. Again, I am Riftwing Designs. You can find me everywhere as Riftwing Designs. And I am so happy to have opened up my morning with you guys. I know we've got another panel coming up, but if you have any questions, I will be in chat. And again, the videos will be coming up. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome, right? There we go. <laughs> All right, TrotCon, it has been a blast. Thank you again. And have a fun day.